This video is to explain how to put on kimono undergarments for a woman who is looking to cosplay a male character that wears a kimono. So I already have my undergarments, the inner undergarments on, so I want to explain what those are. The first thing you want to do is to put on your tabi socks, which are right here, and over that, um, then you want to have a sports bra or a chest binder on to flatten yourself. And then over that, you want to wear the harajuban, which is this layer that touches your skin. There's also an option to uh, wear a pair of pants. These are called suteteko, S-U-T-E-T-E-K-O. And you can see they're very loose and comfortable. I chose to go with the skirt option because it provides easier access to the bathroom, but really, uh, typically men would wear this type of undergarment underneath. So the first thing I want to do is I want to pad out my waist a little bit because men typically don't have waists that go in quite as much. So I have something here which allows me to pad out my waist a little bit. If you don't have this, you can also use some towels, and then on top of those towels, you can um, wind a piece of cord or elastic. Make sure you breathe in and out when you're doing this to make sure you don't go too tight. So I like to go make a knot, twist it, and then tuck in the ends. And this will hold quite well. You don't actually need a knot, which would make a bump in the middle. As you can see, this pads out my waist a bit. Gives me less of a womanly shape. The next step is to put on the nagajuban layer. Let me get that. This is a men's nagajuban. So the main difference between um, the way that men wear their kimono and women wear their kimono when it comes to the under layers is that the collar is not pulled down. So the collar goes right against the neck, neck for a man. And for a woman, you would pull this part down so that it exposes the back of your neck. Let's bring this behind. Put it on your shoulders. At this point, you can check the two sides, and then put your arms through. With this layer, you want to make sure, as well as the inner layer actually, you want to make sure that the right side goes in first and then the left side over. So you want to be able to put your right hand in. And again, for a man, you would want the back of the collar to go up against your neck. So to secure this in place, you can use a koshihimo, which is this type of string that is traditional. And what you'd want to do is take the center part and bind it around yourself. very flat. Bring it back around. You can pull it tight here. And again, I like to tie it the same way that I did with the inner layer where I go through the loop twice. Once, twice, pull taut, Cross and then tuck in the ends. And this is the traditional way to put on the garment. Next thing you want to do is to 
make sure you get rid of all the wrinkles in the back. So pull them to the side. You basically want to move the wrinkles towards your sides and away from the back area. Pull down on this as well. So when you have your back mostly wrinkle free, you're ready to put on the kimono layer. So we're ready for the kimono layer. And you want to get your kimono. Open it up. And we have the collar here on this side. So we bring it around to the back. It's the same idea as the Nagajuban layer. And you put it over your shoulders. And you want to match up these layers on the to match up the height here. Make sure it's even on the left and the right. And then grab your Nagajuban sleeves and bring your arms through the armholes. The men's kimono is actually a lot easier than a women's kimono because you don't have to make the fold over the waist. So you just want to check the side, make sure that the edge here is right around your side, and then bring the left, I'm sorry, bring the right in, and then the left over that. And again, you just want to have this edge here on the side of your body. Any further and it becomes hard to walk. So secure it with another koshihimo. This is the one I have here. You want to really hold this in place while you tie it. And you want to tie it for a men's kimono, you want to tie it around your hips and not your waist. tight if you aren't sure just make sure it doesn't slip around you want to be able to fit two fingers in but not too much more than that for this layer I like do like to do a more secure knot Took in the ends. Same as we did with the other one. And you want to check that everything's where you want to be. The color should be overlapping, but not hiding 
not a jubon collar, which should be showing. This is also your chance to get rid of the wrinkles in the back. Again, pull them to the sides like you did with another jubon layer. Now we're ready for the obi. Once you get the wrinkles out of the back. So I'm gonna show you how to tie a kainokuchi knot for a men's obi. So the first thing you wanna do is you want to get your obi. This is a kaku obi. And what you wanna do is you want to measure out three lengths of the width down two three and an easy way to do that is to fold it one two three down to right about here and you want to leave that edge so what you want to do is you want to fold your kaka obi and leave this length you'll need it later Hold this up against your shoulder and then press here and then lift up this part of the OB and put it against your waist and you should get a triangle shape here. You can see that. It's so like this triangle right here. One, two. I'll pull it a little bit closer so it's kind of like that. And that's how you want to start off your OB. So what you want to do is, it's actually easier to turn your body instead of pulling the obi. Sometimes the sleeves can get in the way. Just pull them out of the way. Bring around. And again, for a men's obi, you do want it to be around your hips. I think I might have tied it a little bit too. I'm going to pull it down a little bit. Have this here. Make sure the edge here is. I mean, this this part is still hanging. Take it around another time. At this point, I like to tighten it. So pull, take the bottom edge and pull it away from your body. this fatter part of the obi versus the skinny part which you folded. This is the te and this fatter part is called the tare. So take the tare and fold it back. You can see what I'm doing. I'm folding it back and tucking it in, doubling it, it on itself. Take this back. And you want the length to be approximately the same. So this is a little long, I'm going to adjust it a little bit more. That's about right. So those are about the same length. And what you want to do is you want to overlap the fatter part, the tare, over the te, and then bring this end through the hole here. And pull tight. Then, I just want to get rid of 
bits and the wrinkles. But you want to make sure you really get that tight. Then fold up the tip. Again, the tardy goes over. And then you want to bring through this part again through the hole you just made and pull it up. And you want to get the shape nice and neat. So make any adjustments that you need to make so that it lays flat. That is how you tie a kainokuchi obi knot. And ideally these ends are approximately the same length. Now that you're done tying it, we want to move it to the back. So you want to grab this top and the bottom and turn it in the direction of, you see how this collar is right here? You want to turn it this way so it doesn't pull the collar open. If you see any parts where the obi is not overlapping properly, you can fix it as you're turning it. centered or slightly to the left. That's considered iki, which means cool. Another thing you want to notice is that this part is going to be looser than the bottom. That's on purpose. And it is considered best to have a slightly upward angle towards the back. And that is how to put on an obi. This is the kind of pretty knot for a men's obi. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more cosplay related videos.